everyone and welcome to this history video focusing on rebellions and unrest during Edward VI's reign. So firstly some of the issues that were really bad during Edward's reign. Because of the rising population and the terrible financial situation that Edward inherited from Henry VIII, inflation was a really big thing. The high population meant that more goods were needed, but six harvests failed in a row, so food prices were really high, and this generally meant a fall in living standards for the lower classes, while rich people were fine and just got richer. And although Northumberland really tried to solve all the financial problems, the effects of coin debasement couldn't be ended overnight, so it was just a bad economic situation. Another big issue is poverty. England was having a much younger population, so that meant there were less people working. And the move towards sheep farming meant that less people were being employed, as sheep farming requires less people. Enclosures where people were extending their fences onto other people's land was affecting the poorer people. And there was a depression in the wool and cloth trade, and that was really important to England's economy. England was operating under a subsistence economy, which is where everyone basically has the minimum standard of living. Also, the dissolution of the monasteries under Henry VIII took away a lot of jobs, and also took away the place that you could go if you were poor or unemployed or homeless and get some charity, so this affected a lot of the lower class people. And the final big problem was the way that the Duke of Somerset dealt with these social problems. For example, the 1547 Vagrancy Act was really harsh on unemployed people instead of solving the real problem and providing new jobs. If you were caught being unemployed and poor, you would be branded with a V, and if you were caught multiple times, you'd be sent away for two years for slave labour for being a beggar. So overall, the financial and social problems during Edward's reign likely contributed to the several rebellions that he faced. So then came the Western Rebellion, or the Prevac Rebellion, of 1549. This was caused by several things. Firstly, religion. They spoke Cornish, not English, so having their services and Bibles in English was not helpful to them at all, and they just wanted their services to be in Latin again. They actually murdered William Boddy, who was the guy that was sent to investigate their church property, see its value and they forced a priest to read their mass in Latin. So there was a really strong religious cause for this rebellion. Also important was the political side of it, as there was a power vacuum after the Courtenay family had their downfall, and they had no leader of the gentry in the area. Also, the social and economic aspect, they killed the gentry, so there was clearly some sort of class hatred in this area, and the high rent and food prices with the bad harvests meant that everyone was just kind of angry. The rebels demanded that the Act of Six Articles be brought back, and that was a Catholic act. They demanded that Mass be in Latin again, and that you were allowed to pray for souls in purgatory, and that you can bring back all the images and fancy things that came with Catholic churches. To suppress this rebellion, Somerset tried peaceful negotiations, but this failed, so instead he killed 3,000 rebels illegally without trials first, and he took all of their property and redistributed it for the Crown. The important thing to remember is that this was a religion-based rebellion. Also in 1549 was the Ketz Rebellion, but this one was more social and economic. Enclosures and high rents meant that there was a general resentment of the gentry and nobility, and the depression in the cloth and wool trade was really hitting them hard. Religion was also a bit of an issue. They didn't like the low quality and uneducated clergy, and the corruption of the church, so like non-residency. Also, similar to the Western Rebellion, there was a political side to it, as there was a power vacuum left in the area after the downfall of Norfolk, so there was no gentry leader. Now, during the rebellion, the rebels always referred to themselves as the King's Commissioners, which suggests that they didn't actually have a problem with Edward, just the social situation that they were in. They actually set up a camp which had a very democratic and disciplined system going on. They even trialled their gentry under their own justice system at the Tree of Reformation. So it was a very orderly rebellion. Their demands involved lowering taxes and rent prices, putting an end to enclosures, and having better quality clergy teach the poor. So their demands were very social economic rather than religion. To suppress this rebellion, Somerset offered 16,000 rebels a pardon if they dispersed, but in the end the royal army swooped in and killed another 3,000 rebels. Ket and 49 others were executed after going through the legal process under the treason laws from the Treason Act 1547, so they dealt with them legally this time. 
Finally, the Lady Jane Grey affair in 1553. Under the device for this accession, Edward named Lady Jane Grey as the next monarch of England and excluded his sisters Mary and Elizabeth. He did this for religious reasons as he wanted to preserve Protestantism and Mary was a strong Catholic so he knew that she would undo a lot of his religious reform if she became queen. So on the 6th of July, Edward died and on the 8th of July they publicly announced his death. Now Mary immediately proclaimed herself as queen and decided to march on London gathering troops as she went. People were really confused as to why Lady Jane Grey was suddenly their queen when she wasn't really an important member of the royal family and nobody really thought she was the rightful heir. So this meant at the end of July when Mary arrived in London, she was met with enthusiasm from Londoners. Everybody knew that she was the rightful heir and so they were loyal to her over Lady Jane Grey. This shows that legitimacy was more important than religion as at this point Protestantism was supposed to be strongest in London, but it shows that people didn't really care about religion, they just wanted the rightful heir, and to them that was Mary, not Lady Jane Grey. In August of 1553, the Duke of Northumberland was executed, despite renouncing Protestantism. So overall, the Lady Jane Grey affair was very short-lived, because the people of England wanted the rightful monarch, regardless if they were Catholic or Protestant.